do you think teachers should almost do like one-on-one, you know, little Johnny, I believe in you kind of thing? Like yeah. that, that energy <laughs> of like... Turns out it's really important. There's um, a study that was done. It was actually done in high school English classrooms where all kids wrote an essay for their teacher. And this was done as an experiment. Half of the kids got feedback from their teacher, diagnostic feedback, which is great. But for half of the kids, it said an extra sentence at the bottom that the researchers had put on. Mm -hmm. And the kids who read that extra sentence did significantly better in English a whole year later. The only change was this one sentence. What did the sentence say? So what did the sentence say? (laughs) The sentence said, I'm giving you this feedback because I believe in you. And the kids who read that did better a year later. Yeah. So when I share this with teachers, I say, you know, I'm not suggesting you put on the bottom of all kids' work. I'm giving you this feedback because I believe in you. One of the teachers said to me, we don't put it on a stamp. I said, no, don't put it on a stamp. It's, um, but your words are really important. And kids are sitting in classrooms all the time thinking, what does my teacher think of me? Does my teacher think I can do this? Um, So it turns out it is really important to be saying to kids, I know you can do this. And those messages are not given enough by teachers. And really believe it. And believe it. Yeah. Yeah, It's like, you can't uh, just say it. You have to believe it. I, I sometimes, because it's like, it's, it's such a funny dance because I'm a, such a perfectionist. I'm, I'm extremely self-critical and I have when I have students come up to me and it's clear to me that they're not even close to good. And it's tempting for me to be like, uh, to sort of give up on them mm-hmm. mentally. But the reality is like, if you look at many great people throughout history, they sucked at some point. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and some of the greatest took nonlinear paths to where yeah. they sucked for long into li- into mm-hmm. later life. And so always kind of believing that this person uh, can be great. Uh, exactly. So that, you have to communicate that plus it. the fact that they have to work hard. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you're right. Silicon Valley, where I live, is filled with people who are dropouts at school or who had special needs, who didn't succeed. Um, it's very interesting that have gone on to do amazing work in creative ways. I mean, I do think our school system is set up to um, value good memorizers who can reproduce what a teacher is showing them and push away those creative, deep thinkers, often slower thinkers. They think slowly and deeply, and they often get the idea early on that they can't be good at maths or other subjects. So, um, yeah, I think many of those subject people are the ones who go on and do amazing things. So there's a guy named Eric Weinstein. I know many mathematicians like this, but he he talks a lot about not having a ha, about having a non-standard way of learning. Mm. I mean, a lot of great mathematicians, a lot of great physicists are like that. And he felt like he became quickly, he, he got his PhD at Harvard, became quickly an outcast of the system. Like the, the education, especially early education system didn't help him. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, is there w- ways for an education system to support people like that? Is it mm-hmm. this kind of multidimensional yeah, learning that you're mentioning? absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think our education system still uses an approach that was in classrooms hundreds of years ago, the textbooks, have a lot to answer for in producing this very uninspiring mathematics. Um, But yeah, if you open up the subject and have people see and solve it in different ways and value those different ways. Somebody I appreciated a lot is a mathematician called Mary Mizakani. I don't know if you've heard of her. She Mm -hmm. won the Fields Medal. She was from Iran. Mm -hmm. Uh, First woman in the world to win the Fields Medal in mathematics. She died when she was 40. She was at Stanford. But her work was entirely visual. And and she talked about how her daughter thought she was an artist because she was always visualizing. And I attended, she asked me to chair the PhD defense for one of her students. And I went to the defense in the math department. And it was so interesting because this young woman spent like two hours sharing her work. All of it was visual. In fact, I don't think I saw any numbers at all. That's awesome. And 
I remember that day thinking, wow, I could have brought a like 13-year-old into this PhD defense. They would not recognize this as maths. Mm -hmm. But when Maryam Mizakani won the Fields Medal, all these other mathematicians were saying that her work had connected all these previously unconnected areas of maths. And so, but when she was, she also shared that when she was in school, when she was about 13, she was told that she couldn't do maths. She was told that by her teacher. Is this is Iran? Mm -hmm. she, she grew up in, in Iran. Iran. Yeah. yeah. So I love that. You know, to be told you can't be good at maths and then go on and win the Fields Medal is cool. I've been told by a lot of people in my life that I can't do something. I'm very definitely non-standard. <laughs> um, but all it takes is that's that's why people talk about like the one teacher that changed everything that's for them. Right. All it takes mm -hmm. is one teacher. That's right. That's that's the power of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it, <laughs> it, so that that's like that should be inspiring to teachers like i think it is you as a single person given the education right. system given the incentives you have the yeah. power to truly change lives and like 20 years from now that's right i feel as medalist will walk up to you and and yeah. say thank so you you did that for me <laughs> yeah absolutely and i share that, that with teachers that even in this broken system of what they have to do for districts and textbooks a single teacher can change kids' maths relationship or other subjects and uh, forever.